Hello, this is Bunting, and today I have a very important announcement to make. That is, I got a new rat. And as you can tell, he is the most handsome, polite, respectful, and virtuous rat you will ever meet, with big nuts to match his father's. So, on that note, he's unnamed, so I ask that you please drop your best rat names in the comments. I will read them, and may even choose one for our lucky rat. But besides that, we're here to learn resonant language style breaks sound design and arrangement. So let's just play the track already, goddamn. <laughs> Hope you like that groovy little arrangement because in just a moment I break it down for you step by step, piece by piece. You already know what's going on. But if you're hyped to see the breakdown, I ask that you please drop a like on the video, leave a comment, as well as subscribe. Those are three ways you can really help me out as well as show your support for the channel, which is a win-win scenario. Also in those comments, uh, ask any questions you might have about this video as well as rat names as well as any suggestions for future videos because I do read them and I do cover the topics you guys offer, which is lovely, you know? But besides that, one more thing, and that is if you want access to all the presets I made in this video, as well as even the project file itself to dissect, you can support me on Patreon. Here are the presets, here's the project file, as well as all my other video presets and project file. It's really an amazing thing. And in addition to that, I have a website, you can get lessons, you can check out my music, you can go to the shop where there's plenty of free sample packs, as well as some paid ones if you want to get some banger samples, presets, wavetables even, and support me, right? This wavetables pack quietly dropped, but very slept on, right? And you'll see wavetables are all the rage these days. Basic shapes are falling out of style, right? Just kidding, they're never out of style, but I did use a lot of wavetables in here. But besides that, I'm done talking to the freaking silence. Let's just break it down with the drums. Okay, so drums, what's going on with drums? Boring, but essential, 90 BPM. A lot of this break stuff sits somewhere between 80 to even 100, sometimes a bit beyond, but 90 is a nice middle point where a lot of this style of stuff sits around, right? But as for the actual groove, you want something head bobbable, especially for this style, it's all about that head bob, that riffage, that gnarlage, whatever that means, right? But per usual, I recommend that you hit these little subdivisions here, not all these straight beats. You know, you want it grooved, you want it, to, want it swung, want it in the pocket, all those words. But just beatbox it out, just tap it out, and you should be, should be able to transpose a great groove into the doll. For the actual samples, a lot of times you hear stuff with a bit more kind of acoustic -y flavor. And for that, I used my Boston snare with a bit of drum bus on these settings. Just really gets it even snappier and punchier, which you love to hear, and a kick. These are from my Waves Pack, which is on my website. But yeah, I just like my own drums, so I use them. I'm sorry. And just a classic hi-hat with some slight randomization for a bit of human humanization. But that's drums. Drums are boring. Drums are lame. But they're essential, okay? So on to the next thing is this squelchy sound. But before I go into the squelchy sound... I want to tell you to take note that all these sounds here, they can go into a few categories, right? We have the squelchers, we have the fat distorted boys, we have the fat plucky boys, or just fat boys I'll call them. Fat boys, distorted boys, squelchy boys, and moist boys, right? And I just want you to keep that in mind because it helps simplify things as you get into more complex arrangements. You know, you can keep it into these main categories to help your brain wrap around them. But how do you make a squelchy boy, a squelchy lead like this? And to do that, I'm first going to disable some stuff and just initialize the patch from scratch so you can see my thought process. So let's just initialize the patch and you'll hear it's a saw wave to start off with, you know? But for, for it to be a lead, I like to have it higher up. You can pitch the MIDI up or you can just hold shift and drag this up a few octaves. Okay, boring, lame. Where's the sauce, you ask? The first sauce I'm going to add, I'm going to turn up this pitch bend range and use this pitch wheel to, you know, mess with the pitch. You know, that's what pitch bend does. And you want to turn this range up or else it's not going to bend as far. 
So yeah, turn the range up, yada, yada, yada. First off, well, next, filter, okay? Uh, basically, a filter is just cutting off all the frequencies that aren't in the orange. And having it on this bandpass setting, this is a low pass, bandpass, since it passes in a band, and high pass passes the highs. You know, the names make sense. It's a great way to get some cool wheel, wheel, wheel movement. That's the bandpass for you, right? But I want it to be a bit cleaner in the movement, so I'm just going to go and select this 24 decibel curve. Basically, the higher the decibel, the tighter the curve, and vice versa. And from there, you can get started with some automation. You see, this is the automation I drew in for automation in Ableton. Just make sure that's clicked and click whatever you want, right? That's pretty cool, right? But if we want some even further movement, we can go in, turn on filter 2, do the same treatment with another bandpass. You can use any filters you want. Bandpasses are just so clean for this kind of valley movement. But as you can tell, it doesn't sound like it's doing anything. And that's because it's on oscillator 2. But we're not using oscillator 2, so get the heck out of here with that. Let's just put it on oscillator 1. So now we have two different oscillator signals being filtered by two different filters, which is awesome. Right, and part of what makes this so valley, like wee 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 wee, is because every vowel that the human mouth makes, like a e i o u, basically a set of peaks. You know, an a might be like this, i might be like this, and yada yada yada. Band passes are cool. You can also use formant filters for a similar kind of effect, right under here, right, with all sorts of parameters to mess with, right. But that's about it. You know, I automated both these peaks in different ways. It's very cool. I like it plus some distortion on the end to get it really blown out, slammed, and full. It just sounds sick. Okay? Gets the job done. But after that, just for a bit of subtlety to this build-up, I have this auto filter with the frequency opening up, as you can tell. Is it that cool rising effect, plus some reverb automation, which you're going to see a lot of. Just adds kind of a nice riser layer, cool movement as well. But we're not even to the drop yet, okay? And of course I laid a little riser here, basic stuff. So what's going on in all the drop, right? So I show you the squelchy sound. What next, okay? What next? I'm not even getting into the good stuff yet. I'm getting to this fluttery sub, which you hear in a lot of halftime stuff, especially the res laying variety. Now this fluttery sub is pretty simple. Subs are pretty simple, right? So I'm just going to... Initialize this preset and grab a basic shape sine wave. And you hear that's a sub. That's all you need for a sub, but if you want to get a little fancy, sometimes it's nice to get another sine wave and pitch it up. You can pitch it up an octave as well as an octave and a fifth to 19. And that can make it sound a bit fatter. If you want it even fatter, you can have a tiny bit of distortion too. It has a similar effect, right? But do that to your taste. The fluttery movement though, which is, I'm sure, why you're all here, you can get from some white noise. And as you can tell, the white noise is a bit harsh right now, so let's just turn down the level. And from there, let's put on an LFO to get that flutter. To make it flutter, you gotta have it quite fast, so... That's pretty cool. You can also change the mode to, uh, not there, to, uh, second. Get some more free range and you're fluttering. It's still a bit harsh, the white noise, so I'm just going to cut off all the lows and get it just in the high end so it sounds a bit cleaner. So high pass filter and just drag that up. And I'm going to put it not on oscillator 1, but the sampler. So it only filters out that sampler playing white noise. Right? Cool stuff. That's a fluttery sub for you. You can change the rate. You can distort it more or less. You know, have fun with it but it's a sub with a bit of finesse on it. Okay, so now to the good stuff, right? The squelchy and the sub bass, it's pretty cool, but this stuff, if that was cool, this is like epic or awesome, whatever is a tier above cool in your book, gnarly also fits, but this random is randomized sounding stuff, cool pluckiness, how is it made? As you can see, it looks like a complicated mess, but you know what I do. I make it simple and beautiful. So to start off with, I'm going to initialize because I'm insane. I'm going to do it from scratch. So you don't often see me using wavetables on this channel. That's because a lot of times sounds don't need wavetables. But for getting something just cool and random, 
it's always nice to just grab a random wavetable and have some nice harmonics to just start off with. So Drink the Juice is just a wavetable I ended up settling on, but there's a ton out there, a ton to mess with. Feel free to use any of them, as you can see, develop in this video. Okay, so we have this wavetable, right? It's playing a little melody that's beautiful, but we want it fat and we want it random. So what better way to get some randomness than the actual random knob, right? Every time a note triggers, that random knob's gonna make it go randomly. And you could drag it around, have it work in different amounts at different points of the thing. And yeah. Now to just alter the wavetable a bit, this isn't necessary, but can really help you get some more control over the sound. I'm gonna vocode it. Vocoding is nice and vital. All these features are nice. But that just gets it sounding a bit lower harmonically, which is gonna be nice when we slam it with some distortion. Plus, I believe I use some bending. Makes it a bit moist. You know, you don't have to use this stuff, but, but use it to your liking, right? And now for the second layer, a bit of a harmonic series, right? Harmonic series, basically, it's just a bunch of sine waves in the harmonic sequence, which is awesome. And once you put some distortion on here, you're gonna really hear that shine. Uh, all these little steps here, I basically had it adding some extra randomness, but I wasn't controlled. So I decided to, you know, basically draw out some steps using this lovely paint tool and put it on this wavetable. And then you see it's triggering, it's re-triggering every time it plays. So I'm going to put it on sync. So it plays and just sustains. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's actually go to the effects to get some sauce going. The first sauce, distortion. Gets it sounding absolutely fat, especially with that harmonic layer, which I even automated upwards. Which adds that little extra harmonic screech just at the end. Okay, don't worry, we're almost done here. Multi band compressor. You can never go wrong with it. I like to turn the attack up. Just get it sounding clean and slapping. And to actually make it plucky, how do you make it plucky? You have a plucky filter. So we're going to get envelope two and pluck it down and put it on the slow pass. You can add more or less resonant squelch. You can make it a steeper slope. And all that stuff, it's fun to mess with for sure. And then for an extra bit of stereo, I like to turn on this chorus. With the feedback down or else it kind of rings out in a weird way. But yeah, that's pretty much a cool sound if you ask me. And for some extra finesse, I took the envelope to kick. That really gives it that groove. And that's just this envelope here. I'm turning up the decay. You see when the decay is higher, the filter goes slower, which lets more frequencies through. It really adds an awesome groove to it. And I use that trick a lot. You hear that in a bit of resonant language stuff, but I got a little carried away with it, as you can tell right here. But yeah, that's the pluck bass. I have a bunch of variations of it, all with different wavetables, different harmonics. But you know, feel free to make it your own, experiment, all that jazz, and let's move on to the next sound. Okay, our next sound, this beautiful, fatty, distorted bass within context. Yeah, it's beautiful, love it. But what's going on in here, as you can see, a tiny bit of post-processing, which without it, it sounds like pretty much the same. Okay, so in Vital, we have our old friends, the sine wave, right? Great basis for distortion. Just grab it from the basic shapes right here. And a harmonic series, which I turn up to this frame here. But the real beef comes from the distortion, obviously. So without it, it sounds like this. You know, just hitting that harmonic in the top and this level automated forward to give it some nice movement. But as you can tell, once we add some distortion, it gets absolutely slammed and crazy, to be honest. I didn't just use the default distortion, though. You can use soft clip, but I wanted a hard clip for that extra disrespect. You know, no one's 
getting by here. Everyone's getting disrespected. And then a bit of reverb with that little mix throw trick I use for a bit of a cool little fill effect. And it just sounds clean. You know, all you need is to automate that mix. You see, that's what it does. Yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, a bit of saturation on the end. I don't know why it's, it can add a bit more volume and a bit more distortion with a bit of saturation, just turning the drive up. This notch filter isn't doing a ton, but feel free to abuse this. You can hear this in a lot of break stuff. Just a ton of notch filters layered. You see this in a lot of my videos, especially like the halftime videos. But to get this, just get an auto filter and turn it to notch and you can automate it around and have fun with it. You know, it just adds a bit of subtle movement, which can be nice if you're a nice guy, only if you're a nice guy. And of course, the classic low pass filter to give it a bit cleaner movement, to have it open up slowly rather than right away. It's just clean, it's just cool. Low passes are great for movement in any way. Of course, this is just one way to make the distorted bass. You know, you can mess with the harmonic and the level automation, add some more notches, and get plenty of different results. Make it your own, right? So this next sound, another pluck bass. Pretty simple, I'm not gonna go too deep since it's pretty much the same. You know, and really you can just make variations on the same sound. I say this all the time, but you gotta drill it into your damn skull boy, okay? Because really, just make variations of the same sound. You can make a whole entire drop, a whole masterpiece, and Vital finally opened. Really, I was just grabbing random wavetables for this one. You know, didn't even have the harmonic series layer. Just having random stuff. You know, when you're trying to get some just insane out-of-pocket sound design, it helps to just grab a random wavetable, you know? If you really have an idea of what you want, though, for sure, uh, shape it with some basic shapes. Okay, but effects, classic stuff, distortion, filter, bit of compressor, and chorus. Pretty much the same stuff as we had before, and the same little filter automation trick, I believe. Um, yep, there it is. Right, all that jazz. On to the next thing. Okay, before we move on to our moist boys, there's one last little pluck in this lovely sequence. Right, and that's this lovely beam, beam, hitting a cool harmonic. Whenever you hear that like a distinct kind of note hitting, it's always a clean harmonic. And honestly, I feel like that's what makes a lot of music, especially bass music, you know, because we like to explore those harmonics, right? This is the same pluck. You see, I didn't even hesitate to fix the LFO. It's doing nothing, same effects. I just chose a different wavetable. You know, this one just has very harmonic. Just very clean harmonic right here, which I decided to use. It's cool stuff, right? But those are the, the plucks. There's a bit more in here, but onto the moisture. Okay, time for your favorite sound ever, this moisture. So whenever you hear these kind of moist sounds, I mean, that's the only way I can think to describe them. I'm sorry if you hate that word. You're weird. It's always from, not this stuff. This stuff is just uh, makeup to it, but the vocoder. Without it, kind of lame. But with it, ooh, that's that's a moist boy. So within Vital, it's pretty simple. Pretty much nothing going on, actually, besides our old friend, the saw wave. With no effects, really just a saw wave. This is basically in a knit patch, right? But all this post-processing is what makes it. So to get your vocoder actually sounding half decent, first of all, let me just disable all this, I think. Yeah, so let's disable all this and throw on our vocoder. I've showed this off in a few videos with different methods and whatnot, but this is how to make it sound moist. Saw waves are especially good for this. So really, you just want the vocoder, not on noise, but modulate your mode. And you could hear a bit of that moisture coming through, but to really get it to shine, you definitely want to boost the volume a bit or just EQ it and or, you know. So I like to scoop these mids and boost these highs as well as you can get some uh, OTT, I guess. But what did I do up here? Okay, no, it's just loud as heck for some reason. Okay. You can also turn on Enhance. That kind of helps with it. Um, as well as you can mess with these knobs. So basically, release effects, how long it kind of stays in. You see, it gets a bit quieter, but it gets a bit snappier. The more bands you have, the better. Let me actually just get an OTT on here. 
I did a bit more post-processing just so you can hear it more. There you go. Okay. And you can start to see the reason why I end up scooping so many mids and lows, especially with the vocoder, is you hear it ring out. But something I like to do is pretty much just draw a little, little rainbow, half a rainbow, which makes it cut out some of the lows and keep more of the highs, you know? Because essentially this is almost like its own EQ, right? Selecting which vocoder bands come through, right? But what are bands? They're just like little bands, little band passes that the sound gets pushed through in a weird way. But the more bands, the moister it's going to be, the less bands, the kind of more crunchy it's going to be. So mess with that. You can mess with the range to kind of have a different EQ peak. It's almost like a resonant peak. It's a good way to think about it. And this is also kind of where it bottoms out. Mess with the bandwidth. 100 is nice for the moist sound, but you can get it sounding kind of cleaner. Or weirdly ringy. You hear this in a bunch of resonant language stuff. You know, this became a full-on vocal tutorial. Right, but yeah, for this sound, I pretty much just had it. Let's see, yeah, pretty much normal stuff. Besides, I turn up this top to get some more high end coming through, and I turn this formant down. This formant's really cool because it's almost like you're pitching it around, but not really. Minus 12 is great because it's just an octave, gets it deeper, gets it saucier, right? But that's not it. There's one more thing you can mess with, or a few more retro. Changes the algorithm, gets it sounding a bit more ringy. Uh, depth makes it harder to push through, but if you really push it through, it can get a different effect. Yeah. You know, all just cool stuff to mess with. You know, mess with it, make it your own. This is just what I did on mine, right? So that's the vocoder. I'll show you the rest with the post-processing. So of course, our scoop, our little vocoder, right? But I wanted more scoop to help with that low end and OTT to actually make it loud enough to be freaking heard. And on OTT, it's a lot of the time I like to turn up the time. I like to turn up the time because it results in less artifacts coming through a lot of the time. I even scooped out the lows completely here because the lows are still too muddy. A tiny bit of saturation, a bit more crisp, a bit more beef. And I think I use like I don't think I ended up keeping these notch filters, even though they're nice for a bit of sweepy movement. You know, just basically slamming it with OTTs, cutting out those lows, and having a bit of filtering, which I didn't end up using. But you can use if you want it being cool like that. But, you know, that's essentially the moisture. You know, cool stuff. And you can really apply this vocoder effect to anything. You definitely want to add some similar processing, you know, boost those highs especially. Slam it with OTTs, just boost the volume. You know, so it's actually heard. Vocoders are tricky, but with this kind of method, shouldn't be too hard. You know, copy it step by step. And just because um, all the other things have the sub built in, but with a vocoder, the sub gets super iffy. I decided to duplicate and have a dedicated sub on here. It's just another vital playing on the same track with just the boy, the sine wave. Nothing big, nothing crazy. Okay, but that's that. On to our next moist boy with a bit more movement. Okay. So, for a bit more movement here, we have the same processing, pretty much, except I cut some harsh frequencies here. So it's a bit easier on your ears. I recommend doing that with pretty much any sound design, especially as you get weirder and it's more experimental with it. But for a bit of extra movement, I thought to myself, you know, how do I get some movement? Filters are great. Uh, FM is great. But the classic, just grab a wavetable and automate it, can never fail. So as you see, those are my automations. It's moving around. Right, clearly my CPU wants none of that. But really, it's pretty simple. But as you can tell, hopefully, having that saw layer gets a lot fatter. You know, saws are basically just love vocoders. They get you the cleanest, moistest sound. So layer saw with anything through vocoder and you get plenty of different results have different wavetables, have different filters, different whatever, you know, and have it cool. And beyond that, I have this pitch wheel bending up. Pitch wheels are especially cool. Bitch wheels, whoa, whoa language prevent. But um, they're especially cool when you get them real low through a vocoder. Because when a song... Yeah, that's fat. When something's playing super low through a vocoder, it emphasizes that bubbliness. You know, it gets a kind of popping sound, as you can tell. 
which is just sick, to be honest, right? It's not sick, it's healthy. We can't say bad word. Sick is a bad word. Okay, so that's your moist boy. Let's just get to this next boy. You know, I'm sure you can sense some patterns here. We got our moist, we got our squelch, we got our distortion. And this is a distorted boy. You know, we have some notch filters sweeping around. We have some, even some, uh, some saturation creeping up to add some extra oom to the end of this. Because the more saturation, the more slammed it's going to sound, right? But I wanted movement in that. You know, movement is key when you're trying to keep your sound design interesting, I think. Yeah, basically notch filters moving around, OTT moving around. And for this actual vital patch, um, we have other stuff moving around. By other stuff moving around, I mean another wavetable. The harmonic series, not really a wavetable if you think about it, but who, who am I to say anything ever? I don't know why. I didn't think I wanted this moving, but apparently it is. But, you know, just the classic harmonic series slammed up here. I covered that a bit earlier. Talked about that. Similar stuff, you know, the same reverb throw trick, right? I just added a bit of a phaser down here for a bit of extra finesse. And for this phaser, without it, sounds not as focused. Basically, for a phaser, it's going to end up looking something like this by default. It's moving around, which is cool, but I don't want it stereo for one, so I'm going to turn on the offset, and I don't want it moving unless I tell it to. And from there, you can just mess with the center and get different results. So you can mess with the center, put it wherever you want. You see, it sounds a bit squelchier in the high end or screechier. Fatter down here. Ignore the crackling. It's really freaking bad. I'm sorry. Support me on Patreon and I'll get a better PC. I swear, got Okay, gentlemen, the end is near. We're creeping near the end of this arrangement. I'm so sorry. I know you're getting worried. You want to spend much more time with me which you can in the Discord server, link in description. But uh, yeah, let's just go over this next pluck bass. Just a variation on the plucks, you know, hitting a different harmonic here, different randomization, you know, um, different wavetable, same stuff everywhere else. You know, pretty basic stuff. You can mess with the distortion, really just copy it. I've explained the methodology. I don't think I got to go super deep on each of these sounds. And plus, the great teacher is one who guides their students through experiences rather than just showing them, right? If that makes any sense, uh, drop a like. I don't, I don't know at this point, bro. Okay, weird wub. Finally, something new. Okay, let's turn off this amp. This amp on the heavy mode. Bit of dry wet. Gets it crunchy, but not too crunchy. You know, like I'm talking like you like cooked up a little tortilla. You like fried it up a bit you know, and some oil maybe, just get it a bit crisp, you know, but you don't want, you don't want to crunch, just a crisp, okay? But for this, I really am just reusing a lot of the same stuff. I, this is actually this exact uh, pluck bass, except I decided to just mess with this filter to make it, I think I made it less steep, as well as mostly I automated it to have a wub. You see, because filters, can give you a lot of different movement. They're fun to mess with. Trust me. Trust me on that one, okay? Just gotta believe me. But yeah, having the filter open in a triangle shape or whatever, it gets you more of a wub, you know? And having these harmonics here gets you that cool sound and a wavetable. Yeah. Simple stuff, you know, proves that you can make very different sounds just with slight variations. And that's the moral of today's story. Okay, next. Last, but certainly not in the least. I mean, it's not quite last, but you get the saying. We love the sayings. Another pluck bass. Okay, as you can tell, I love my pluck basses. Resonant language does as well. They're just groovy. You know, slight variation. You can get plenty of different sounds from similar techniques. I decided to go with the straight wavetable this time. Slightly randomized with this thing here. And with no distortion, actually. I want something a bit cleaner. Ooh, you hear that whip boom you know wavetables are cool it's easy way to get a cool sound but if you lasted this long I'll tell you if you just wavetables are basically just sounds turned into another sound right so basically what I'm trying to say is um, wavetables just kind of save you time and processing in a way because a wavetable is just a super processed sound that's been converted into a wave right 
So you can add your own FM, add your own ton of effects, you know, then add your pluck and distortion for a similar result if you want to do it from scratch, you know, non-GMO organic type stuff, all from scratch, free base, not free base, don't talk about that. But uh, yeah, same kind of little trick here. Um, where is it? Envelope decay, right? Just to get that extra movement and some level automation, which really just goes willy nilly. As you can tell, you don't have to get too ridiculous with it. And I say, as you can tell a lot, but I don't think I said right a lot in this video, which is good news for us, for any right haters around here. You know, from now on, I'll be saying left. And of course, forgot to mention, there's a little bit of a reverb throw, same technique, same jazz, and this little squawk at the end. Pretty much literally copied and pasted from here. I just brought it down an octave, you know, but that covers it. You know, 30 minute video, you'd love to see it. Hope this made sense. Hope you're able to gain from it, right? But I have a few more notes, so stay stay here, okay? So this arrangement's pretty complicated. Of course, you can copy my stuff, spin it off, make it your own. But I want to give you some pointers as to like how the freak to start something like this. And I always recommend just going in with a basic saw wave, you know, basic shape. You don't need any sound design. Just have something you can more or less groove to just on its own. Just write a little riff out, you know, then fill it in with sound design, you know. As long as the riff is solid, you can do a lot of crazy stuff with the sound design and get away with it. But it seems a lot more complicated than it is. That's because it is complicated and I lied to you, okay? But really, it doesn't have to be crazy. Just start a solid riff and split it up. You know, take this note, turn it into one sound. These notes turn into another sound and just experiment. And once you get some good sounds, you can mess with uh, switching them out in different spots, you know? Of course, it is, it is rocket science, basically. I was going to say it's not rocket science, but this stuff gets pretty crazy. But really, if you just put the time in, don't get discouraged and keep experimenting, you're going to end up with something half decent, right? Get a solid riff. But how do you make a solid riff? That's the question you all been asking. Of course, I always recommend you just listen it out in your head. Imagine it. Sit there. Be like, what would be a groovy? And put that in the DAW. You know, write it out. It might not be instant, but... I believe in you. You can transpose it from your brain. And for a bit of variations, as you can tell, as you can tell, that's my catchphrase today. Um, I just have pretty much the same thing for these first two little bars. Then at the end, I add a little, little switch up. Little switch up here. Have pretty much the same as this here, right? Whatever that means. And then on the end, I add a little variation. You know, you can really just have kind of like an A, B, A, C type thing, I see like uh, one thing, different thing, back to the original, and then really switch it up. You know, that's like kind of songwriting stuff. But I'll be honest, I didn't quite do it this way. I start, I focused more on the sound design, right? But I ended up more or less keeping the riff in mind, you know, because riff is always number one. And if you want your riff crazier, just add a random octave in, okay? Just put this up an octave, but yeah. Clearly that explanation was all over the place, but I hope that gave you some insight into how to start filling this stuff out. You know, get a solid riff, get your moist sounds, get your squelchy sounds, get your freaking fat sounds, get your distortion sounds, the four, the holy quadrupinity. Um, not sure that's the word for it, but you'll get a pretty good tune on your hands in no time. I believe in you. And one more thing, just because I'm spitting words at this point, you know, Whenever you hear any kind of squelchy sound, if it's a bass, I know I didn't cover a whole lot of that. It's probably going to be peaky filter automation. You know, I cover a lot of stuff in that tipper tipper style videos. You know, formants have peaky filters. Any any filters with peaks in them moving around gives you that squelch, okay? And anything that's sweepy is notch filters. Anything that's anything is anything is everything. And I'm done talking. Thanks for watching this long to the video. Pretty long and in-depth video, but I like the tune. Of course, you can get this project file on the Patreon and you can get some banger samples and wavetables and presets and everything to mess with on the website. Plenty of free stuff and paid stuff if you want to support me directly. And you can get lessons and you can hang out and you could vibe. If you do want to hang out, we have a Discord in the description called Bunting's Flock, right? It's called My Flock, right? But really the flock is its own autonomous entity. I think they're going to overthrow me at any moment. 
and start their own channel. So I'm a bit worried about that. But obviously, I'm kidding. So yeah, really thank you guys for watching. You mean the world to me. I love making this content for you. I love educating, and you make it all possible. Of course, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. But most of all, thank yourself for watching. Thank yourself for believing yourself and getting educated on how to make cool sounds because that's what life's about, okay? Making cool sounds and say goodbye to the rat. Goodbye, rat. Okay, yeah, I'm done here. I've said too much already. They're going to come after me, but goodbye. Peace out. Resonant language. Much love.